Come, Holy Spirit, come now, come as you wish. Come, Holy Spirit, come now, come as you wish. Come, Holy Spirit, come now, come as you wish. I wanted to point to you today the second reading of there are so many things at once to teach, so you have to choose something about one of the most famous chapters in the whole uh, Bible, the first letter of the Corinthians, chapter 13, about love. But we know from another letter of St. John, this, this is the only definition about God. God is love. And this uh, is sometimes very often misunderstood, because this could be taken also as a proof for the Blessed Trinity. It cannot be love, as some people think, love is God. No, no. The Bible said God is love. So there must be loving relationship, and when you have true love, you have to have more than one person, at least two. So in this way, it is very obvious that this what happens in God, he is trying to give it to us, to make us his true children. The, the difficulty is to put on the spiritual level that we are quite excited with the material things. And we know how to desire them. I have the same sickness. You click on Amazon, you know, that purchase, you know, and you are just wondering why they are not ringing the bell, why they don't deliver immediately. And the question is, how long are you excited with this, what you have purchased? Sometimes few days, sometimes week, and everything fades away. With spiritual things, it's a bit difficult. We don't desire them. We don't know what they are, but... When it's coming, if you do something for the spiritual moment, you, you like it and you cannot forget it. Just a simple example, if you did something for your family, for your friends, somebody who was in desperate need, you did something good and they didn't even notice that you did something for them. Can you remember this joy, this satisfaction of heart on the spiritual level and it lasts? And it stays for many weeks, sometimes years. That's what is the difficulty in, in us, because somehow we lost this sensitiveness to desire the spiritual things, and we're putting stress on the material, which cannot satisfy it. And it's a kind of gift of God that we are not satisfied with material things, because this points to Him. It invites us to turn to Him. As I mentioned, this famous letter of Corinthians Love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous, love is not proud, love is not selfish. If you go really to the original text, you might be even terrified. Because it doesn't exist the word in this letter, but the meaning in Greek is like this. Love is always patient. Light is always kind. And who can by sound reasoning say that you are always patient, always kind, always wishing well, or in reverse, as Paul was writing there, love is never jealous, love is never rude, love is never selfish. Never? You know, this is a very important thing to understand. As I mentioned, this word doesn't exist as a separate world, but the grammar structure points it's always or it's never. So, Paul is not writing about our love. Paul is writing about God's love, about Jesus' love, which is presented to us as a pattern, which is presented to us as a goal, as a desire. You can read this letter substituting the word love for Jesus, and it fits. Jesus is always patient. Jesus is always kind. Jesus is never jealous. Jesus is never rude. Jesus is never selfish. And nobody can prove that he was. So in this way, I wanted to invite you to go somehow beyond our human experience, more of desiring, and in this way, you can be jealous. Can I love like Jesus? It's very nice jealousy, you know. This is very nice to identify the missing part in me, can you give me this grace? Can you give me this gift that I will at least try 
to go this direction? Love is the foundation of Christianity, as Jesus said, but there are steps of love. It's the lowest step and it's the highest step. The highest step you might remember from the teaching of Jesus is very clearly identified. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. It doesn't exist anything greater. And it's possible. I don't know if the soldiers going saving somewhere abroad, if they did out of love or out of duty, but it's obvious sacrifice. You cannot make more than sacrifice your own life. But it might be much closer to you, even maybe in your family experience. And it happens even with all our technology, with all our science, it happens even in our country here. The doctor is approaching mother who is about to deliver a child. We will try to save both lives. We will do everything to save both lives. If we have to make choice, which one? And almost 100% of mothers, they will say, the child? I met such a situation and fortunately I, both were saved. But the mother making the generous act of love, the highest love you can ever offer, offering your life for someone else and rejoicing forever in heaven. So the question is, what is the lowest level of love? This is what we are not allowed to fall from this step lower than this. And it's not that complicated, everybody of us knows it. An appreciation of the person, thanking the person as he or she is, wishing well to any human being. You, you do not have to be in some intimate relationship with anyone. You can say in fact to anybody, even the person whom you do not like, I wish you well, I love you. And this is a very practical approach. If you do this or if I do that, is this really showing respect? If it's really wishing well this other person? And you can multiply negative examples from any families what it's a clear sign of not wishing well. So we are somehow invited to step on the lowest step and then climbing if needed even to the last one. But it's once more not really our love. This lower step, it's human love. It's, it could be very precious. It, you might be very much attached to it, but it's not really satisfying. The love which is satisfying is the love of God. And that's why Jesus is pointing to his love, to his example, to give us encouragement and the right direction. It's very easy even to put it in the picture, what is not satisfying. Because my love and majority of you, the love of us is as strong as this tiny, tiny flame of a candle. It's just enough one person who will blow on it and it's gone. You have to rekindle it again and, and, and it takes time. So why this love of God is so satisfying? Why this love of God is so powerful? Because if the love of God could be represented by the sun, you can, you can try, blow it out. It's impossible. That's why this love of God should be passing to our hearts and from our hearts to the others. That was the essence of this uh, attitude of the grace operating in our hearts. In other words, uh, I told you already, but I can repeat it. If I have enough of you, <laughs> I'm telling Jesus, you know, I have enough of them. You want them to be loved? Come to my heart. You will love them in my heart because I have enough. You can tell it to your spouse. You can tell it to your child. You can take it to any person whom you don't like. I, I cannot overcome it. It's beyond me. Come with your grace to my heart and love this person in my heart and observe the change in you. Oh, there will be surely changes. Uh, if you never try, you will never know. So that's why I'm giving this example quite often on the marriage uh, mass, you know, when there's a, a blessing of the new marriage. Start today. Invite Lord Jesus to love your husband, to love your wife in your heart today when it's easy. When it becomes more difficult, you might remember and use it 
in the same way. But I wanted to show something much more practical, how to put it to glorify God. There's a great example of Brother Lawrence of the Resurrection. His uh, civil name was Nicholas Herman. He was a Frenchman. He died in 1691. He was 85, 86 of age when he died. And he was just a simple Carmelite brother. That time they didn't accept free Saturday. He was working in the kitchen. So the duty was practically 24 <laughs> 7, all the time. There was no day off unless he was sick or anything like this. And this brother, this canonized saint, is amazingly known in the world. At that time, he was living in Paris, in the Carmel in Paris, in, in France. The, the king was coming to visit the cloister and can I talk to this brother in the basement in the kitchen? You surely heard about his uh, way. God does not ask a great deal of us. You look how reasonable are saints. A brief remembrance from time to time, a brief act of adoration, occasionally to ask him for his grace, for his help, offer him your suffering, at other times thank him for the graces which he has given you or is his giving you now, in very practical way, connect with this love. As C.S. Lewis was writing, get this positive infection from Jesus. In other words, if you don't connect, you don't get it. We must know before we can love. Now, how can you love someone whom you don't know? And to know God, we must think of him often. That's why these practical examples, how can you know it? How can you do it? In very simple way. The good news is, you don't need extra hour. You don't need extra activity. Just what you do, do it with this intention. And when our love is strong, he says, we will think of him very often. For our heart will be where our treasure is. If you ever fall in love, just try to remember how often, how often you are thinking about this other person. Almost constantly thinking, talking, remembering. The same mechanism applying to the spiritual treasure. And he was complaining that many invent means and methods of coming to God's love. They learn rules and set up devices, remind them of that love how nice it would be to have extra hour in our day. And he is like refusing, refuting this completely. That's his definition. Is it not quicker and easier just to do our common business wholly for the love of him? So no extra hour, no extra activity, just what you do out of love to him, to glorify him. It's so simple. The holiest and most ordinary and most necessary practice of the spiritual life is that of the presence of God. With our modern technology, it's like the camera or several cameras of God are pointing to us. And he's not spying on us. If you feel that he's spying on you, just check, make the good examination of conscience, you're doing something wrong. Have you observed children, little children? When they are playing close to you or just the neighbor room and they are not afraid that you are coming, that you are checking on them, that you are watching them. It's quite opposite. If you was the same room and you suddenly disappear because you have to do something, they are getting um, fearful, you know, what happened, you know, where, where are the parents? Where is our security? Because they know they are loved. So it's exactly the same with God. He's not spying on us. He's blessing us. Would you do everything just to glorify him? We can do little things for God with great love. That's many saints that were talking about this. He said, I turn the cake that is frying on the pan for love of him. How long does it take? That is from his letter, from his description. And that done, if there is nothing else to call me, no other duty, I prostrate myself in worship before him who has given me grace to work. Afterwards, arise happier than a king. And once more, 
do something for him that no one will even know, nobody will even think about saying thank you to you, but make sure it's for intention to glorify God out of love to him and see, observe what's happening in your heart. It is enough for me to pick up but a straw from the ground for love of God. And Jesus got me once around the church. I was driving on my golf cart and there are some people who are throwing Coca-Cola cans and all other things, you know, and why I have to pick it up? You know, and then I, when I was picking up, do it out of love to God. Try. You will never know what I'm talking about. I would recommend most unrewarded thing, something what is not your duty, which should be done and nobody wants to do it. And do it out of love to God and see what is happening. Oh, there are many things happening in the heart who is loving. He admitted that the path to this union was difficult. It sounds simple, but it's not easy to put in practice. He spent years, ten years, disciplining his heart and mind to yield God's presence. I took it once for my Lenten resolution, try to do as many of these things out of love to Jesus. And I was quite disciplined, but you know, Lent is over, the exercise is over. And still hunting me. And I'm giving, sharing with you, would you try to reconnect, to get this good infection and having the loving heart with his love? If I were a spiritual director, he wrote, I would recommend this practice for everyone. For I believe there is nothing so necessary or so easy. No extra hour, no extra activity. This is what you do, sitting now in the church, to glorify God. During your meals and conversation, occasionally lift up your heart to Him. The least little remembrance of Him will always be most agreeable. The book is available on Amazon, it's available audio. You can listen, it's very short. His letters are less than one hour. It's simple, but as usually, simple things are not easy, but are extremely productive and helpful. St. Augustine, the doctor of the Church, doctor of grace, he was saying, he who created us without our help will not save us without our consent. If you don't want to grow, you will not grow. God will do on his part everything. Just give him a finger, he will do the rest, showing good desire. And he was also writing, my love is what gives me true value. It's the love of God which is treasured in our hearts, which is available, which transforms everything.